It is currently 6 a.m. and as the sun begins to rise behind me, we're going to paddleboard through some mangroves. Yo, check it out. It's so humid outside that you can draw on the windows. So we had just finished filming for the vlog when it all started. I started off my morning without eating or drinking a single thing, so when we got to the paddleboard place I was already hungry. They gave us water, paddleboards and we set off. The river that we were on was actually oval shaped so you could go all the way around and come back to where you had started. We had gone about a third of the way when my dad and brother decided to go back the way we had come because they were tired. I, on the other hand, had the great idea of going all the way around by myself, which I would later find out was a big mistake. I began to paddle for ages, past one left turn that would have taken me back to the start, past the second left turn that I would later be told was a dead end, and as I paddled I kept thinking that the route was getting strangely long. But since the coast was in a straight line, I thought that every next turn would be the one that I would take to go back. Now I just want to take a moment to remind you that I've been paddling for about an hour now, had eaten no food, drank only a small bottle of water, and it was at least 45 degrees Celsius. I continued paddling for about 30 more minutes and all I could see was the trees and the river in front of me. And don't think that the trees gave any shade because the river was at least 50 meters long and the trees could probably be considered bushes. <laughs> I thought for a second that I could maybe pull over to the riverbank and wait in the shade for my family to come and get me, but that thought was quickly countered by my thirst. I had to get water, like I was really, really thirsty paddling to what felt like nowhere in salt water. Now before I tell the next part of my story, here's some things that were going through my head. I have to get water, I might faint, I hope I don't die, um, that probably wasn't going to happen, let's be honest, and don't drink the salt water. Then as I turned the hundredth bend, I saw some houses in the distance and I started paddling towards them. My plan now was to get to one of the houses ring the bell, ask for a phone and water, and call for help. They were further than I thought, but I kept paddling until a shout from my left made me turn. I had now been going for about two and a half hours. No food, no water, 50 degree heat, all that good stuff. The shout was a Coast Guard Army official telling me that I wasn't allowed to go towards the houses. I shouted back that I was lost and needed water, and he told me to wait on a small embankment while he got water. I waited, and soon I became a chef. And soon, a guy came out with water and I was so thirsty at this point that I drank so fast that I was nearly sick. I rested and asked if they had a phone which they told me was not allowed while they were on duty. So the only thing that I could do was go back the way that I had come. But I was too weak. I started paddling against the current, but after 10 minutes, I turned around and went back towards the Coast Guard base. I waved again towards the official, nearly begging for help, and after what looked like some discussion, he radioed for another boat to come and take me back to the paddle boards. The boat arrived about five minutes later and as I clambered on, they offered me water, grapes and an apple, which I drank and ate and it was the best meal that I've ever had. We drove back the way I'd come, clearing what took me hours in just two minutes and met up with the paddleboard company boat, which my family were on searching for me. We slowed to a stop and I switched boats, thanked the Coast Guard once again and we drove back to the docks. And if you think that's the end of the story, it's not because now I had a real problem. I had missed the breakfast buffet at the hotel. 